Okay, last in the Marvel movie marathon leading up to Avengers Age of Ultron is Guardians of the Galaxy. The breakout hit of last summer for a yeah. reason. And it, it was, and like, you know, like on the surface, it seems like uh, the closest uh, thing that the MCU has to, like, taking a really big risk. Let's do a movie that is set entirely in space where we never get to see Earth except in one flashback. And it's gonna be populated entirely with B and C level characters. It's weird to see a movie with like this huge of a production spent on something that a lot of people hadn't really heard of. This definitely has like sort of the highest volume of characters and ideas from the comics that had not even been hinted at on film yet. Yeah, and I love that, uh, see, with any superhero movie, I always think back to the dark days of, like, when they were making these movies one at a time, and, like, when they made one terrible Batman movie and they had to stop for a long time, they had, they had a few Superman movies, and nowadays we get two or three big superhero movies um, per year. Uh, most of them are usually good. Sometimes there's one or two that aren't. Uh, but then we get, they're just, you know, like, what else can we adapt? And there's just, you know, years and years of stuff that they can do. And it doesn't matter if you're doing one of the most popular superheroes in the world, like Captain America, or, you know, a lesser known property like Guardians of the Galaxy, it's clearly the audience will eat it up, if, yeah. as long as the movie is good. Yeah, you can make a good movie out of any of these guys, and even though they have very little in common, except existing in the same universe which is such a weird thing to consider except you know being owned by the same company is what causes them to be yeah, yeah. to exist it's, in the same universe it's weird to consider that while you know um uh, peter quill is um is um, stealing the infinity stone and running away from Korath the pursuer um back on earth daredevil was in an alley i'm um, beating up the kingpin yeah <laughs> you know, the cast is great um, yeah. james gunn um uh, directs with yeah. You know, such enthusiasm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Chris Pratt is our big breakout star yeah, as yeah. a Star Lord. We were already watching um, a Park and Recreation for years by the time yeah. he he um, showed up in this, and he, he just makes such a great um, uh, leading man. I've heard Star Lord described as part Philip K. Fry, part Sterling Archer. Yeah. yeah. I might go for you know, part Fry, part Han Solo. Maybe is what he was going for. Like he he wants to be Han Solo. But he's more like Fry. Yeah. <laughs> I know that um, his design was meant to evoke both Han Solo and Marty McFly. Yeah. And I really like how, like, among little touches, not just with his outfit, but with his whole general character and whole demeanor, it definitely seems like he's um, the grown up ideal of this little boy who loved um, a space adventure heroes, and now he's trying his darndest to embody that guy. Yeah. The movie revolves around these five characters. That represent the Guardians, but you really have this huge sprawling catalog of characters from you know Marvel's, basically Marvel's Cosmic League, yeah, making their film debut here. Our main villain is a Ronan the Accuser. Now in the comics, Ronan is a little bit of a different character. He's yeah, more yeah. of a uh, on TV shows they call it a Knight Templar. He's a guy who you know does his duty. Here he's more of a he's more of a fanatic and a yeah, terrorist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, fitting for a guy who's supposed to be the movie's main villain. And this is a movie also tying it into the other films, especially Avengers, where we get to see more of Thanos, who is finally officially cast now, um, Josh Brolin. And so we get to see him and we get to see, okay, even if Ronan is the main villain in this film, he's still a lackey for the bigger bad guy that we're going to see a few movies down the road. Which um, is, is another thing that makes the movie a little risky. It, helps, it keeps it from feeling as self-contained as people expect movies to be. It's more like the comics. Whenever I hear people raising objections and saying, you know, why is it like this? Why is it like this? I say, you know what that's like? It's like reading the comics. When some plot thread comes up that seems to come out of nowhere, it's like, oh, that's actually picking up from this other comic that you didn't read and you know something? That's okay. <laughs> you will be fine. I have had to endure this kind of thing for years and years. Mm -hmm. It happens. You'll be fine. Yeah. Like at the end of of Amma Thor the Dark World, they have that post credit stinger where we meet Amma the Collector, which kind of bummed me out that in Guardians, he has he seems to have a little less going on character wise than he did in that little tiny stinger. In the in the movie, he's just kind of delivering exposition about about them on the Infinity Stones. Hey, we still got Benicio the Tower. Place blows up. Sure, trying to you know do this. He's got all these weird mannerisms. My favorite part is when he's talking about the Infinity Stones, he does this kind of... 
<laughs> and then and then Rocket makes fun. It's like, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can we move on already? <laughs> Rocket Raccoon is now a movie star and yeah. Groot as well. Yeah, yeah, totally. I feel like that we were touching on the cosmic stuff in Avengers when we see him with the Shatari and with the with the Thor and everything. But with there's so much going on here that we've never seen in Marvel before, and it's great to kind of open that up finally. It yeah. seems like, you know, the, this was the kind of stuff that uh, a lot of Marvel fans never thought they would get around to. If we just get an, a good Iron Man movie and a good Captain America movie, and, and maybe maybe a good Thor movie. Uh, uh, but, but, also, but also there is that uh, aspiration of, oh, wouldn't it be great if they could do, like back in the 90s, uh, most of these characters were on the Infinity Watch. It's like, yeah, wouldn't yeah. it be great if they could make this a new movie? Who would be... Who would star in that? Yeah, yeah. Of course, that's never going to happen. Yeah. No, no, no. You know, Hollywood yeah, yeah. would never go that far into making a movie like this. But now they did. Yeah, they, they and, did. And, and, and it's really, an, it's an incredibly fun movie. Yeah. That, you know, everybody, everybody loved. The closest uh, comparison is probably the original Star Wars. Yeah. And I mean, in Star Wars, there is, there doesn't seem to be an Earth in yeah. the Star Wars universe. Like... They can talk about this. Oh yeah, this is where humans came from, but they don't. And in that case, over this movie, I mean, Earth exists. Obviously, Peter Quill is from there, but nobody ever, but none of the other alien characters ever seem to visit or have been yeah, there yeah. or really know anything about it. I think I would have loved if uh, there was some quick line about, like maybe uh, Glenn Close at Nova Prime talking about how there's some kind of an embargo on Earth. Like you can't go there. Like, they're sort of like the prime director. We can't go to Earth until they can, you know, come out here and see us. We know that eventually, um, the Guardians are going to team up with the Avengers, either by... Because the money is too good yeah, not to do that. Either by the Guardians going to Earth, or by the Avengers coming out into space. So that'll probably so, be Infinity War, I would Yeah, guess. yeah. I'm sure that uh, um, Peter is going to have a hell of a surprise when he meets Captain America, who, <laughs> when he left Earth, was dead. So it's yeah. going to be like coming back... And finding that Lincoln is president. Yeah. Or that Elvis is still alive and is going on tour again. Yes. <laughs> Let's talk about Drax. Mm -hmm. Drax played by Dave Batista. Yeah. He's just. I remember in the comics when Drax first appeared, he was just kind of another space guy with punchy powers. Mm -hmm. you know, not really much going on character wise. And a little bit later, after Infinity Gauntlet, he became Space Hulk. He's, he's, he has this very simple, childlike personality yeah, and yeah. body of this, you know, um, this powerhouse. So then. After the uh, Annihilation crossover, which kind of um, brought back a lot of the cosmic heroes into the fold after we hadn't seen them for a while, he's still the same guy, same backstory, but now he's uh, he's gone from being basically Hulk in space to Wolverine in space. Yeah, yeah. He's you know just looks more like a you know a UFC fighter, and you know he's got he's got body paint now, and he fights with two knives, which he never used before. Yeah. And he's still, but just like before, he was still trying to kill Thanos. Over the years, we always pronounced it uh, Thanos. Uh huh. Um, I'm not sure how we landed on that, but that's another thing. It's nice to have these characters appearing on film. Is that oh, that's that's how their names pronounced, like um, a Gamora. We always said yeah, you know, a Gamora. Yeah. <laughs> which, yeah, that's, I'm pretty sure that's wrong now. Yeah, sounds right, but no, it's wrong. Yeah. yeah. Gamora. So who's the guy who dies but then is alive again at the end in this movie? It's Groot. Groot. Yeah, yeah. Groot. <laughs> Groot sacrifices himself to save all of them, but then he can just grow he can another... Just regrow. Groot. Yeah. yeah. Watching at the beginning, I still got choked up when he's you know, going there and watching his mom die. And I still got choked up when, you know, he's holding stone and he has the vision of his mom one more time. Yeah. It's every time. Take my head! Take my head. Oh! <laughs> God. <laughs> I'm not sure what that's supposed to represent, him yeah. seeing his mom when he grabs the stone. Yeah. Um, but anyway, it's... Uh, I'd like to sort of bring his story full circle. Yeah. Here's another thought I had in the prologue there with his mom. And this is, you know, what a woman in her condition would look like if she's been on chemotherapy or whatever. She has no hair. But then I thought, is that supposed to remind me of Moondragon, who was also on the Infinity Watch <laughs> with Gamora and Drax back in the 90s? Um... Probably not, yeah. but it uh, seemed interesting all the same. And uh, I know that uh, among the Easter eggs for Marvel fans, when we go to the collector's place, there's this big cocoon in a glass case, which is supposed to be Adam Warlock, who was the leader of that little gang of uh, 
Yeah, yeah, and the gang of cosmic uh, heroes in the spoiler, comics. Spoiler: At the end of Fanny Gauntlet, he's the one who winds up with the gauntlet and gains that godlike powers and sets everything right. And Nebula's in that story too, so maybe we'll see her again. Yeah, the gauntlet goes on. Who Could be fun. You suppose yeah. we'll see Star Fox? Isn't he technically Thanos' uh, brother no, or something? Because Star Fox sucks. Yeah, he is his brother though. Yeah, I wonder and he if sucks. they. <laughs> I mean, I mean, what if they do announce on, you see a, on Facebook or whatever, like, Star Fox is going to be in the movie and he's going to be played by this guy. Probably somebody who is on Glee. Can't believe that guy was an Avenger. <laughs> what, what does he even do? You know, he, he smiles plays. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> That's his superpower. There is a comic where, we, where he tries to smile at uh, the Hulk to calm him down and the Hulk just basically knocks him into the next state. <laughs> so I guess he's a titan so we can take a punch from the Hulk. Mm-hmm. Other than that, I don't know, fuck that guy. One of my favorite parts is when they run to Korath again, and he goes, Star-Lord, finally. <laughs> <laughs> the bad guy <laughs> finally recognized <Yes>. him. <laughs> it's like he made it. Yeah, he's made it. He's a real space outlaw now. <laughs> <laughs> this is a really good episode of, of um, uh, Cinema Sins, uh, even though there is some nitpicking in there. There's some great bits where you know he takes off Sins just from group being... You know, just so being cute. awesome and adorable, being awesome. yeah. <laughs> like when he, you know, massacres all the guys in the whole thing by himself, and he gives that. <laughs> it's like oh, I gotta take another sin for that. Jeez, <laughs> I'm not uh, made of stone. I remember that they were, you know, they hadn't announced that there was gonna be a sequel yet because they were still acting like this wasn't a sure thing. <laughs> yeah. But uh, like even I think James Gunn said that it's probably not gonna be a sequel. And then when it was said, I was like, well, of course there's going to be a sequel. Yeah. What are you, crazy? Because they did, like, leave so much open. I'm looking forward to finally finding out who Star-Lord's dad is. Yeah, because that was the whole thing, and they just left that yeah, on yeah. his end. Yeah, and they said, that, they said that it's not going to be who his dad was in the comics. So, mm-hmm. yeah. You know, Star-Lord is a very different character than he yeah. was in the comics. And yeah. there he's more of a space cop. When he appears in the first Avengers cartoon, I think he actually has a British accent. Yeah. Or am yeah. I thinking of Rocket? No, no, that's Rocket, yeah. Okay, no, Rocket yeah. has the British accent. But yeah, he's more of a space cop instead of being more, instead of here where he's a space rogue outlaw, which is fine for, you know, being the hero of a movie like this. But yeah, can't wait for Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Yeah, that's the, you know, enormous trail of uh, projects that they that we got to look forward to from Marvel. <laughs> yeah, can't wait for Avengers 2 as well, because yeah, yeah, this is on. the last movie before Avengers Age of Ultron. So yeah, well, uh... Um, and see you next time when we cover Avengers Age of Ultron.